So today I'm talking about a P2227 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P2227 code? Well, it's a barometric pressure sensor A, circuit range performance. And what does this mean? Well, basically there's sensors measuring all the air going into the engine and also the type of air that's going into the engine. There could be what's called a manifold absolute pressure sensor that's just measuring the pressure inside the manifold. There can also be a mass airflow sensor that's measuring all the air that's going into the engine. And there can also be this barometric pressure sensor that's measuring the barometric pressure. For example, if you're driving around at sea level, but then you drove the vehicle up a mountain and the elevation changed, then the pressure is also going to change as you go up the mountain. And so this barometric pressure sensor could pick that up. It reports that information to the computer, which then will adjust the air fuel ratio mixture that's going into the cylinders. But when you get a P2227 code, the computer's seeing some kind of problem with this sensor. And so it's got to be troubleshooted to know why. And one thing to note about these sensors is that they can't be separate. They can't all be built in together. Sometimes two can be built in together and another one separate. Some vehicles won't even have one of these sensors. So it's really going to vary. It's just going to depend on the vehicle, the year, the model, different things like this. So if you do go to work on your vehicle, be sure to get a diagram where all these sensors are located and what's going on with it. Because just keep in mind, there will be differences. And so what would be some possible causes of a P2227 code? And well, the first thing that could cause this is a dirty air filter. If that filter gets real dirty, it's going to block the airflow going into the engine. And that's going to cause problems. It could throw those sensors off. So the first thing to do is be sure that the air filter looks good. Then the next thing that could cause is that that sensor has just gone bad and just needs to be replaced. If you have a good OBD2 scan tool, there's some different ways to go about testing these sensors. There's some good YouTube videos on that. One thing that can happen with these sensors sometimes is that they just become really dirty and they just need to be cleaned up. If it does look really dirty, you can get what's called mass airflow sensor cleaner. And basically you take it off, you spray it real good, you clean it up, you put it back on, you clear the code and you see if the code comes back. And quite often that does work. But it's also possible that it's just gone bad and just needs to be replaced. So the next thing on the list is going to be a bad sensor. The next thing that could cause this is that there's some kind of issue inside the wiring. There's like an open, a short, a bad connection, something like this. So if you have a multimeter, you can go and test the circuit and be sure that it's good. If you do go to work on your vehicle, you will need to get a schematic or a diagram to know for sure what's going on inside the wiring. But basically, you go and check it. Be sure you're getting voltage. Be sure you got a good ground. And be sure the sensor wire that's going back to the computer, that it's good, that it doesn't have no opens or shorts or anything like this. Because the next thing that could cause this is some kind of wiring issue. And the next thing that could cause this is a vacuum leak. And basically when this happens, all the air going into the engine should be going in through the throttle body. But if it doesn't and there's a leak somewhere, like a loose hose or a bad gasket or something like this, and the air is getting in around the throttle body, then this is going to cause a leak and it can cause issues and it can throw everything off. There's some different ways to go about testing for a vacuum leak. Some mechanics will start at the engine and they'll get like a spray, like starter fluid. And then they'll go around the engine or wherever they think the leak might be at. They'll spray the spray. And if the engine idle changes and they know they found the leak, they know what they got to go and fix. And another method is the smoke machine method. We're basically use a smoke machine and you feed smoke into the intake. And wherever that smoke comes out, you know you found the leak. You know what you got to go and fix. So there's some different methods to go about trying to find a vacuum leak. But the next thing that could cause this is a vacuum leak. And the last thing on the list is going to be a clogged up exhaust, like a bad catalytic converter that's all clogged up. Basically, if that catalytic converter goes bad and it gets all clogged up, then the engine is going to be working harder to try to push all that air out. And this can cause the air to back up and it can throw those sensors off. Usually, if that catalytic converter has gone bad, then you're going to be getting other codes. You'll be getting like catalyst codes or O2 sensor codes or things along these lines. So if you are getting other codes, be sure to pay attention to that. But the last thing on the list is going to be a clogged up exhaust. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P2227 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me. I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you. Please click like. Please click subscribe. And have a good day.